Hi folks, Dave with DBS Tech Talk and today we're going to do a comparison between two different headphones of the somewhat similar price point and uh, compare build quality, sound quality, and overall value and uh, hopefully this will help you make a decision if you're coming into purchasing either of these two headphones. So the headphones that we're going to be comparing are the M1060 and the Hi-Fi Min HE4XX from Mastrop. Let's start right off with build quality. Now the uh, M1060 is a very simple build. Um, but it's definitely not the strong point of the headphone. And I call it a, hope hang, a, a coat hanger design because it has metal, but it's really thin and kind of, I don't know, it just feels like it'll break at any moment. Um, the parts that hold on the headband are plastic. And on mine, the, the one on the left ear is looser than the one on the right. And it just feels like it's going to crack. The holes don't always match up evenly. And the headband itself is made of some chintzy plastic with a little bit of padding on it. When you put them on your head, they're, they're okay. Um, but they're not uber comfy, at least not for me. Uh, the pads... Are squarish they're, they're really long but they don't they're not super wide and so for me they don't fit all the way around my ears they fit lengthwise but widthwise I can feel them touching especially towards the back of the ear so if you have a little bit larger ears these may be a problem also they swivel non-stop you can get them in any position, which causes problems because they can do this number, go all the way around, and you're, you may end up with your cable port upside down on the wrong side. There's no markings for left or right. You just go based off of your pad angle, so the fat side goes to behind your ear, and then when it comes to cables, you would um, just connect right into that one left the build on the 4xx is so much better uh, you have metal arms and yokes the headband has metal underneath it and you can feel it has a somewhat padding weight wise the m1060 feels a little heavier and clunkier and bulkier um but they're probably about the same weight truthfully uh, it does have a hard plastic cup and this part is some sort of really thin aluminum. They do not rotate near as far, which is nice. They're controlled. It's got a little bit of a tightness to it, so they don't just flop around like the M1060. The um, pads are removable, whereas on the M1060, the stock pads are permanent with glue. So you do have, if you're going to change them out, you have to pull the glue off. Um, double-sided tape or some sort of you know, glue adhesive to put them back on. Now, I did change the pads on the, the 4XX from the stock pad just because I like the Dekoni Fenestrated Sheepskin's better and they're kind of hard to put on. Unlike the, the other Hi-Fi Men's, the, I find that the 4XX's clips are actually a little harder to get, into, get in. I, I don't know why. It could be that the Dekoni pad is just a little thicker, but this is a stock pad it comes with. It's this uh, high fi and Focus A pad, and it's not a bad pad, but it's a lot shallower uh, than the Dekoni. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but... Um, and the hole is a little bit smaller on the Focus pad. Plus, this is velour and then a, a, a pleather material on the outside. And I just found it wasn't as comfy. Uh, I, I don't really care for velour on my, on my ears, on any of my headphones. 
and so I've always changed out. And I found that the Fenestrated Dacones are the pad that works the best. Another pad that you can get, now I use these on the M1060, so I cut the clips out of them. But this is the hi fi Man Pally Pad, which comes with the Sundara. And it's got, it's more like the Advanced Alpha Pad. Uh, it's got a, a fabric feel on it instead of velour. Still has that pleathery feeling on it. And it's a, a little bit thicker than the Focus A Pad. And it didn't sound bad, but I just found the Dacones to be best. Overall, the build quality on the hi fi Man 4XX blows the M1060 out of the water. I mean, it's just so much better. And in my opinion, more comfy. It slides real easily. And it adjusts. And you just... When you put them on your head, they feel lighter. They don't slide around near as much as the M1060. And... Uh, I just found them more comfy. Whereas if you do that on these, they're going to fly off. And uh, they just... Oversized coat hanger, speaker, headphone, and proper feeling headphones. Cable wise, um, the stock cable that comes with the M1060 is a, it's okay, it's not great. It's got a uh, nice metal and it, on the end, it is a right angle, goes to a 3.5 and it has a little bit of cable strain relief and then it goes up, goes to a Y which is plastic, but you know, it's decent. It's a little short for desktop use. It's got a little slider, uh, same fabric, and it goes to your right and left. I put the tape on. Um, I didn't have any blue for the left at the time, but I used white. And, I mean, it works. It's not the greatest. Only comes with this cable, and it comes with a uh, quarter-inch adapter. And a big, huge, massive box. That's the only stock stuff that you get with the M1060. Two other cables that I have purchased for it um, was this one, which is, now bear in mind, this is a version 1, so it's got the MMCX connectors. But I bought this one. I can't remember who I got it from, but somewhere off, off of Amazon. I like blue, so... I got the blue. It's got the metal. It's a straight 3.5. No strain relief, but the, the split is metal. And then it goes up in. And these do not have the sheath on them, the plastic sheaths for the that most over ears have. So it's flexy. It doesn't hang on your shoulders or anything. So if you're looking to get replacements for that um, and you're not going to use them in, in ears, I would recommend getting ones that do not have plastic sheaths on them as a uh, you won't have to either remove it or fight with it on your shoulders. And then somebody asked me for what balanced cable I got. And I got this one off of Amazon. And again, it has the markings of uh, red is right and clear is left. And then it's got a really nice braid to it. It's nice and thick. I believe this is an 8 core. And it's got a um, little slider. Hard plastic at the split and then this part is really nice and thick and twisted and it goes in goes to a, a metal casing with some release uh, strain reliefs that are nice and then this is a 2.5 millimeter um, they do have a 4.4 millimeter version I believe but they don't have anything that goes into an actual XLR that I could find um, that was within the price point that I wanted to pay these were only $20 Works well, some good, nice build quality on it, and uh, that would be how you would turn it your uh, M1060s into a balanced, and then you would need to purchase a connector like this that has the 2.5 uh, balanced in, and then you can run your XLR. If you have an, a portable amp that has the 2.5 millimeter balanced, you could just use this cable, obviously. Um, but I don't find any noise. Um, issues by using the extender 
As far as cables on the 4XX, I'm going to give the stock cable about as much grief as I did the, the M1060. It's uh, rubberized. It's longer um, feeling than the high than the uh, monoprice, but it's got it's it's just never straightened out. It's got these little rolls and kinks. I have tried and tried and tried to smooth it. Uh, it does have nice lettering L and R on it. Has nice and thick ones. They click in because on the high fi menu you do have that little cutout, so you have to be careful what cable you do use on it. Uh, it's a nice and thick. <coughs> Goes to a right angle, but it's not as um, huge and protruding as the Monoprice. And it comes with a nice quarter uh, that clicks in. Overall, it's not bad, but you can definitely do better. And so I went in and upgraded. And uh, got a periap cable for it. And it's a very nice quality, nice and thick. Goes into a quarter uh, inch. And this one is by Amphenol. And then you got a really nice thick Y split. And then it goes up and you're marked left and right by uh, red and black. And works excellently. Plus it's longer so you don't have to be sitting... Um, one foot in front of your desk it would seem like this is the cable that I got for balanced um, made by KK cable it has the three point or the yeah the three point fives that do connect right in and then it goes down it has a nice plastic rubbery feel it is a little stiff but it's not too bad um, has a little slider, which I really don't know why. And then it comes all the way down, a little thin, goes into your, into the XLR. And that is a, can't read it. New trick, there we go. And uh, it's not bad quality, it's a little short. I'll probably get a, get a replacement for it, but for now it works well to play the uh, Hi-Fi Mins on balance. So that's a general build quality. I know this is long, but we're doing a comparison. Overall, I would give the build quality and the cable quality to the Hi-Fi Min. Uh, the M1060 is not bad, but it you can definitely tell they cheaped on the build quality. The Hi-Fi Mins have really nice build quality you would think that they cost a lot more than $170. How do they sound? Well, um, you have two different sound, two different sounds that uh, they produce. Now I did, um, I have modded my M1060 and we'll cover that. I have, the only difference I did on the HE4XX is change the pads and that didn't change any of the sound qualities from what I noticed. On the M1060, I did. When you first get them, they sound um, dark and very um, muffled. And so the first thing I did is I removed the pads and I actually put Focus A pads on for the longest time. And then I also used the Brainwaves XL pad. And you have to connect them with like tape, double sided tape, and they just stick on. Make sure you line them up properly. When I removed them, the silk behind the original pad came off. And so they were open, as you can see. Usually they are, those are covered, but they are wide open right in here. And then also, this part here is super mega sharp. Um, and so I removed the grills. There's a thick foam in there. I took that foam out and I put the grills back on upside down, removed the sharpness off of the grill and they were a lot more playable and that opened them up m massively. They were sounded super wide, they didn't sound near as muffled, um, cleared up the bass issues a little bit, 
But it did do one thing, and that was add a lot more treble. And so with the different pads on, I found that the XL pads warmed them up a little bit more. The focus pad um, adds a little bit more sound stage to it. And the stock pad is great, but and it gives a really nice wide stage, adds a nice slump to it. But you really hear a ring in the um, upper mids and lower treble. And so I don't really care for the stock pads on it until I did the mod of that piece of silk or fabric that came off from behind the speaker um, or pad. I put behind here and it covered up keeping it open so the driver wasn't exposed to the air. And it's so thin anyways that it didn't really change anything but what it did, I think, is took the glare off of the backside of the, the grill that it was reverberating causing. And I noticed that since I've had that in, I don't hear the ringing near as bad. For this um, comparison, I did put the stock pads on and, and just left all the other mods. Because it's a little bit of a pain to try to put everything back together. Plus, I think I've lost the foam. I couldn't find it. I ran it, ran both of them on uh, single-ended and balanced, and I will make notes of differences. So, my modded M1060 versus HE4XX. Base-wise, um, the M1060 is well extended, has nice impact, has a nice tone to it. But it lacks details and it's a little forward. The HE4XX has a very fun sound to it. It has a meaty bass. It's very nicely um, textured and has a good tone to it. It has a decent extension. It doesn't extend as far as the M1060. And at times it can sound disjointed and um, loose on busier songs. But overall I would give the bass to the HE4XX for being more balanced, whereas the M1060, even though it's more impactful and fun and got more of a thump to it, it's not as detailed, whereas on the HE4XX you get the more detailed sound. On the mids, the M1060 is um, got a natural timbre to it. It's slightly recessed and it has a warm tone to it. Whereas on the HE4XX, they are warm and romantic. They're very full-bodied, very engaging. They're not aggressive at all. Uh, they emphasize decay and, and not attack. They're very resolving. And they are, they're not forward, but they're not laid back either. They're pretty much right where they should be. And if you saw my review on them, it confuses me a lot because that's not a sound I like. Normally, I like my mids to be a little more forward. Overall, I would give the mids to the HE4XX just a little bit um, as they, they don't sound near as recessed, especially on some songs as the M1060. The treble, um, the treble on, the eight, on the M1060 is a love or hate, and they can reach super high. They have very... Their, their details are lacking, almost like the, the bass on them. They can sound very grainy, um, and they can sound muffled at times in the higher ranges. Very grainy at top. They're forward, and they can be sibilant. And also, they can get a very much a ringing noise in the lower treble and upper mid. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas on the HE4XX, they're not impressive, but they're not disappointing. Uh, you can they're they're dry and laid back. Uh, they do lack some energy on them, but they're smooth and detailed. So um, every now and then you just want a little bit more crispiness, a little bit more air from them, and they just can't give it. Whereas on the M1060, you get plenty of that, but so, but on, at times, especially on songs that really emphasize um, trouble, you can get too much, and they can be very fatiguing. The sound stage on the M1060 is uh, wide and massive, especially if you remove the foam from behind the grill that really opens them up and adds a lot of nice uh, sound to them. 
the 4XX is not near as wide. They are, they're wide, but they're, they're not like this. This is like you have a bunch of speakers um, way out on the side of your head. These sound more like a natural stage. Uh, they do lack some layering in depth. It's more right, center, left, whereas on the M1060 you can, can get in-betweeners. Um, it is a small stage, but they have excellent clarity, whereas on the M1060 the clarity does lack detail. Uh, these are well balanced, wide, and intimate at the same time. Whereas these are just wide. You, you don't really ever get the intimate sound, in my opinion, on the M1060. Imaging uh, on the M1060 is well spaced and has good separation, but it does lack somewhat of the details. Uh, on the HE4XX, it's more direct, but very clear. You don't get the distortion, but you, you but you can definitely tell where it's coming from, and it has really good uh, detail. The overall detailing on them, the M1060 lacks micro detailing, whereas on the HE4XX you get clarity and micro details abound. And that's all on single ended. If you take the balanced cable and you add it and you run it off of the X7S or something other than, or, or some other balanced amp, keep all the same stuff that I said about single ended and add in. Um, it opens the sound stage a little bit more on the M1060. The, um, gives it a little bit more headroom and just sounds a little more spacious. It helps with the treble issue a little bit. Um, it brings the the ringing under control a little. It's still there. It's a little prominent in some songs, but it's not near as prominent at, in like every song. They are still somewhat fatiguing, and it adds a little bit more thump and bass to it, and it cleans things up just a little. But at the same time, they still do lack detail and clarity overall. On the 4XX, it adds just a little bit of headroom in the soundstage and, and, and stuff like that. But where it really helps is it adds that crispiness and the airiness and the energy to the treble. That on some songs, you're, you, you just lack it a little bit. So balanced really helps these out in that regard. And I, I absolutely love these on balanced. Is an amp required? No, but it's highly recommended. No, and it's highly recommended. You don't need one to sound good, but at the same time, you benefit from one, especially if you're going to run them balance. And so, um, I highly recommend them. The amps that I used for this review was my topping stack. I used a topping D. Um, D30 DAC and an A30 amp and then I also use the AUN X7S with an SMSL Sanskrit as my DAC. Do they work on tube? Yes, I'm not a huge fan of it on tubes but they do sound good on tube. Both of them sound good on tube and uh, the tube amp that I use is the APPJ PA1502A and the amp or the DAC that goes into that is my Music Hall DAC 15.2. So, yes, you can use them on tubes, um, but I would recommend using them more on solid state. Overall, I give the HE4XX the upper hand. I think that is overall just the, the better um, sounding headphone. Also, it is cheaper than the M1060, so I think you get a better value for it. And... Build quality is supreme on this. I think you get a better value for build quality alone for $170 for these. Uh, they might not be the prettiest looking things in the world, but they're super comfy. And then sound wise, the sound stage isn't the largest, but the details and the, the overall clarity that these give 
is superior to the M1060. Is the M1060 bad? No. And I still recommend it. I think it's a good starter planar headphone. But if you're getting the two of them, I recommend the AG4XX. I mean, you're going to save yourself money. And in my opinion, you're getting a better quality headphone. So. Folks, this has been my comparison of the M1060 and the Hi-Fi Men HE4XX. Hopefully this will help you make a decision in the future. And uh, I'm glad that you continue to watch my videos. I appreciate all the views that I've gotten and all the subscribers. And thank you for watching. This has been Dave with DBS Tech Talk. And I'll catch you in the next video.